Hey guys, it's Jay. It's day three of the 100 Days of Summer Challenge, and already it's become clear to me that you guys are just as interested in the food side of this challenge as you are about getting active and getting outside. And the funny thing is, now, I actually love food more than when I weighed 460 pounds, mostly because I understand it better now, it absolutely tastes better now, and I know how to find flavor without really sacrificing health. Most important, though, is the fact that I now eat real food. I'm not eating out of boxes and packages all the time. The foods that I eat aren't overly processed. They aren't full of chemicals. I eat from the perimeter of the store and not from the aisles. Some of what I eat is still processed. I'm still kind of new to this whole thing, but there's no doubt I'm a hell of a lot better off now than I was a year ago. So today I'm going to show you how I make my meal plan and, you know, how I set myself up to actually stick to it each week. So the first thing you need to know if you want to make meals like this, you have to be willing to put in the time. And that's not always time in the kitchen. Often it's about putting time into planning out your week. Picking foods that are going to help you meet your health goals, help you maintain good nutrition, fuel your new active lifestyle, and, you know, not unimportant, keep foods on your plate that you're actually excited to eat. If this starts to feel like a diet at any point, you're already on your way to failing. This is all about a whole new lifestyle. So, as we go through the process of making a meal plan for this week, don't get caught up in trying to copy mine. Copy my process. I promise it works. But don't copy my meal plan. You have to find one that's right for you. Okay, guys. So, every meal plan should start with a list of the meals that are within your program. So, each one of these cards represents, by category, all of the breakfasts that I know I'm able to do in some way and stay within my plan. This uh, column is all of the lunches that I am currently uh, have as part of uh, my program, and the longer one here um, is uh, all of the dinner options that I have. These aren't really specific. For example, these aren't recipe cards. You know, it says beef chili, but it doesn't say what's in it. It doesn't talk about how it's made or anything like that. These are literally just for meal planning purposes. The details of what go into each of these, you know, stuffed chicken doesn't say what it's stuffed with. Stuffed mushroom doesn't say what it's stuffed with. The idea here is to come up with what the meal is and then... As we put it on to this, which is our meal planning sheet, um, it'll slowly morph into specifics. Um, so you pick the foods that you're eating, so the meals that you're eating, put them onto the meal plan, and then as that becomes a grocery list, you start to get an idea of what makes sense. Because you want to control really how much money you're spending, um, how many different things you ha you're preparing for, and for me, because I, I pre-cook uh, a lot of this and keep it in the freezer not just for the week but sometimes um, you know if I'm going to make uh, if I'm going to make stuffed peppers um, you know I might only eat that once this week but I know I'm going to cook six of those and I know that that's going to be put into the freezer or if I know what I'm stuffing the peppers with this week might actually be basically the same stuff that goes uh, into my meatloaf um, because that way I can make that mixture once and serve two meals get some slots filled up on my meal plan and get some extra ones put in my freezer as well. So let me show you how this breaks down. The sheet, by the way, um, I've done this one by hand as I have forever, but I have developed this as a printable sheet, but I'm in Cape Breton this week and I don't have a way to print it, but I'm going to get the downloadable one uh, up onto the Facebook page for you guys. Um, but it's really simple. Basically, each day you're just going to have a breakdown for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for your whole week. I do this every Sunday and I do my shopping every Sunday. I do my meal prep for the week ahead every Sunday. It's a bit of a time commitment, but it really helps you stay on track. So let's start with taking a look at the breakfast options that we have for the week ahead. Now I know, just based on my routine, that there are certain things I do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start with uh, Monday. I know I'm going to have uh, egg, bacon, uh, and salsa. And the important thing to note as I filled these in is, just because I'm saying what it is, when we turn that into an actual recipe, when it's time for me to actually cook that, uh, I know how to do that in a way that keeps me within my goals so that I'm eating, you know, a cup of food per meal, that I'm hitting the calorie marks that I, that I have. So, you know, a food from this category and from this category and from this category, I can mix these up straight across the day and I know I'm still going to hit my... Uh, my daily goals. Um, there's nothing on here that is high in sugar. There's nothing on here that's high in carb. So as I change, you know, my program, as I change the, the foods that I'm consuming at any given moment as I go through this, some of these cards will get pulled. You know, right now, I know I'm not eating 
uh, just I'm not eating red meat. Not for any particular reason. I just haven't in a long time. When I stuff my peppers now and I stuff my mushrooms, those are full um, those are full veggie options. Unlikely that I'm going to put meatloaf into my meal plan this week. If I notice that many weeks have gone by and I haven't used this, I'm just going to pull it out of the mix, right? It's going to stop being an option for me. And then these are there, and maybe I'll go out and find something else um, that I can put in that mix. So let's start uh, looking at our breakfast and filling in our meal plan. So I'm going to have uh, bacon, eggs, uh, and salsa um, on Monday, Tuesday. I'm going to have a breakfast pita. Um, I know that every week on Saturday morning, I like to have breakfast nachos because it's... Saturday is the one day a week that breakfast for me isn't at 4.30 in the morning, so I don't mind having those. Um, let's see, uh, Wednesday, let's do some oatmeal and berries. Um, what do we got here? Oh, I know I have mini breakfast cups. Uh, in my freezer. Those are the ones, it's basically an omelet mixture, but you pour it into a mini muffin tin and you bake them in the oven for 10-15 minutes. I keep uh, a, a Ziploc baggie of those in my freezer constantly. So I'm going to have breakfast cups on Thursday. And I'm going to have those on Sunday as well. They're a great weekend. Nice and easy to grab before I hike on Sunday morning. Uh, so that leaves me with Friday, and Friday, you know what, I think Friday, I'll just have oatmeal again. So you see, no real science to what ended up where with any of these, but what matters is now I've made a commitment to actually have that. So I'm going to stop the video, I'm going to do the same thing for my lunches, I'm going to do the same thing for my supper. I'll show you what this whole thing looks like when it's filled out, and then we'll turn that into a grocery. Okay, so you can see here now we've managed to turn this into a full week, and I dropped my snacks in as well. I'm a very boring snacker. I don't really plan to snack, but when you look at these, I have uh, veggies set up for three of the weekdays. Um, that is a couple of baby carrots and a couple of sticks of green pepper uh, with a tablespoon of tzatziki and cucumber dip, and I keep that at work, and uh, if I... And feeling like I want a snack, I know that I can knock one out for about 50 calories. I don't snack every day, but I always have one prepared because I don't want to, you know, part of my success is that I never get creative. I shouldn't ever be making decisions on the run. Um, that's part of my problem before. That's why I'm so organized when it comes to, uh, to planning these things out. So there's my week, um, and it looks like a lot. It looks like a lot of work, um, but the first step in, in making this happen based on these recipes uh, and on these meal ideas is now we have to flesh these out and see what they actually mean. Like what's in the, what's going on the pita pizza? What's going in the lettuce uh, taco? What berries am I using in my oatmeal? Where does all of this come from? And I do that uh, at this point when we start making a grocery list. So literally I go through this meal by meal and I say, okay, Monday's breakfast, eggs, bacon, and salsa. I have all that in my fridge. Uh, chicken pita. So for starters, chicken pita, I'm going to have to buy uh, a pack of pitas and I buy the six inch ones. Um, don't get caught up in white or whole wheat because there's barely any freaking difference. I buy whole wheat because I like the taste of them, but you know, uh, that that's not an area where you're going to get healthy. So don't beat yourself up over it. Um, also on the chicken pita, I know I have chicken breasts in my, uh, in my freezer already, uh, pre-cut down into uh, three ounce portions. That's about half a breast a piece. Those are all there and ready to be, uh, to be cooked. But I'm going to have to buy um, just normal veggies that I would put in that. So I'm going to add in some green pepper. I know I'm going to buy onion, and that is red onion. That's what I use in my pita. So let's come back over here. Um, here, oh, I have stuffed pita right here. This is supposed to be stuffed pepper. <laughs> pepper. Um, so for the stuffed pepper, so I'm already buying green pepper, but that green pepper was for my pitas, uh, and I was going to slice it up. If I'm making stuffed peppers, I'm going to buy at least six of them, and that way I can make them and cook them. Right now I have none, uh, in my freezer. So I'm going to get six, I'm going to chop two of them up for my, uh, pita mix, and I'm going to leave four of them for my stuffed pitas. Also, uh, stuffed pita, stuffed pepper. Also going into my stuffed pepper, um, there would be... Um, other vegetables. So I'm going to add in some mushroom here because I use a lot of mushroom in my stuffed peppers. Um, 
the rest of my stuffing for my stuffed peppers is salsa, which I have. I also already have uh, my skim mozzarella at home that I melt on top. So that's basically it for uh, the stuffed pepper. Breakfast pita is uh, egg white and the veggies from the chicken pita and the pita from the chicken pita. So I already have all that stuff. Uh, stuffed chicken is the chicken breast. I'm going to stuff it with... I'm going to stuff it with asparagus this week and I don't have any. So asparagus gets added to my grocery list. But then that's it for Tuesday. I have everything I need. Oatmeal and berries. I have frozen berries, fresh oatmeal. Uh, Wednesday, I'm out for lunch. I'm going to be at McGinnis Landing, and I'll get the chicken stir fry. So whenever I have a lunch that's uh, scheduled, I always find out where it's at if I'm not the one picking it. And I already know um, from the menu what I can get. So I know I can get a chicken stir fry or a veggie stir fry with half the amount of sweet and sour sauce that I would uh, that comes in their normal order. I also get brown rice, and I only get half the rice, and that helps me that's how I would make it if I was making it home through one of these uh, planned recipes. Uh, salmon, I need to buy salmon. So I'm going to write down salmon. And veggies, when I have it for dinner, I have just frozen bags of vegetables in my freezer. It's one of the things I prepare. So that's it for uh, Wednesday. Thursday, breakfast cups are already made. Thursday for lunch, I'm going to be at Dimitri's, where I'm having a chicken in Slovakia. I'm having Greek for lunch. Stuffed pepper on Thursday for supper. I already got all that stuff because we had stuffed pepper on Monday night. Uh, Friday morning, oatmeal and berries already done. Lettuce tacos. So I'm going to have to add in lettuce. And I'm going to make these uh, lettuce tacos, which means I'm going to buy some uh, ground turkey. Um, pita pizza. I, I have everything. I already bought the pitas. I already have all the vegetables that I'm going to use on the pita. The only thing I don't have that I uh, like, I, I use salsa as the sauce on those. Um, but I am missing, uh, what am I missing? Oh, I'm missing the uh, turkey pepperoni. which uh, Butterball makes, uh, it's really good. There's 40 calories in 10 slices. Put it on a six inch pita and it's absolutely delicious. You can make a pita pizza for about 120 calories and about seven grams of fat, really good. Breakfast nachos, uh, I have the, I use the little, um, you know, the cups, the, the little nacho cups. Um, the mixture that goes into those is just scrambled egg beaters and veggies from an omelet and a little bit of salsa. So I already have all of that stuff somewhere else in my list. Turkey pita is going to be the same as the chicken pita from Monday, only I'm going to use turkey that I already have cooked and bagged in my freezer. Um, haddock and veggies for uh, Saturday's dinner. Um, I don't know if I have haddock or not, so let's add that back onto the list. And then we can back down here. We have breakfast cups. Those are pre-made. Lettuce taco. We're making that already on Friday, so I already have that stuff. Mussels and veggies. I always, If I have mussels, I almost always have them on Sunday because I have this fear of them going bad. I get groceries on Sunday, so I know they'll be fresh. And that literally becomes my grocery list for the week. What I'm going to need to get through the week is a pack of pitas, six green peppers, a couple of red onion, a package of mushrooms, about a pound of asparagus. I'm going to get one serving of fresh salmon. I'm going to buy a big thing of romaine lettuce because I'm using it for uh, the tortilla wraps. I'm using it actually as the tortilla for the tacos. I'm going to get a small package of ground turkey. I'm going to get a pack of turkey pepperoni, haddock, and mussels. And if, literally, guys, if you add all this up, um, I'm only spending about $30 a week on groceries. Now, I understand this is easier for me because I'm one guy um, and I'm able to, to keep this nice and simple. If you're doing this for a whole family, you're doing this for more than one person, not only does it cost more, but it just gets more complicated. I, I fully respect that. But I know people that have who use this plan the same way that, that I do, um, who have kids and who have a spouse, who have people in their home who aren't on the plan, and they find a way to stick to this. And honestly, if you do stick to it, you'll save money on groceries. And if when you're adding something like, um, you know, I have to buy ground turkey to have tacos once this week, I'm going to buy a larger pack of it. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to throw it in my freezer. So that week, as we went through this, half of the things I need I know I already have. They're already chopped. They're already prepared. In some cases, they're already cooked and they're already in my freezer. The longer you stay committed to this, the easier it gets because the more prepared you are week over week over week, no matter what meals you're picking um, out of your uh, off of your cards. And then just a, another tip, uh, grocery stores are hell. You know, they're designed to get you to buy things that you don't need, to get you to buy things you don't actually want. 
what you want to do is put this in order uh, as you walk around the store. So I know when I go in, the first thing I'm doing is getting these vegetables. So I would rewrite this list, starting with my vegetables, green pepper, onion, mushroom, asparagus, uh, lettuce. I know that the right to the left of that is the seafood spot. So I'm going to put in my salmon, my haddock, and my mussels. Then I'm going to hit the bakery department for my pitas. And then, guys, that's it. I'm not in another, except for like household stuff and hygiene stuff, I'm not in another aisle at the grocery store. Nothing that I bought. If you go through this whole list, nothing that I'm eating this week even has a UPC code on it. And that's a really good sign that you're working a real food plan. And then you're going to eat stuff that tastes really good and that you really actually like. All right, let's hear it. I want some feedback. That's how I plan my meals every week. And I've been doing it this way now for a year. So check out the Facebook page. I'm going to get a downloadable uh, meal plan uh, sheet that we can be using through this. And then keep your uh, weekly plans, guys, because I did this one from scratch, but in truth, I haven't done one from scratch in weeks. I've got uh, a year's worth of these. So there are there are times I can just go back and pull a week from three months ago, and a, and a whole week is already there and planned for me. The longer you stay committed to this, the easier it gets. That's how I plan my week. How are you going to plan yours? <laughs>